today, the OS that you usually associate with the uh, 2000s is Windows XP. It was fairly popular throughout the main part of the decade, even after the release of its successor, Windows Vista, and is still got a fair cult following to this day. But there is an OS that came before it that is equally as important, and so I at least fairly decent market share when it came to Windows versions. A version of Windows that was supported for quite a bit of time, but died a slow, painful death. Windows 2000. So, to understand where Windows 2000 began, we have to go to early 1997, when Microsoft was just a big tech company. So, Windows NT 4.0 was completed in 1996 and released to the public the same year. And Microsoft codename Nashville would be split into Detroit once again. Haha, <laughs> Detroit representation. And Memphis. However, around this time frame, Microsoft was working on Windows NT 4.0's successor, Windows NT 5.0. The first build that I can find an exact date for was compiled in March of 1997. Windows NT 5.0 was to be developed in tandem with Microsoft codename Memphis, which became Windows 98. Microsoft was also planning on changing the general product line naming of Windows NT at this point, and they went with Windows 2000, which, according to a BBC article I found from around the time of Windows 2000 release, said that this could potentially cause confusion and imply that it could be a successor to Windows 98. However, Windows 2000's development started to slip up, and it was released in 2000, while Windows 98 was released in 1998. In January of 2000, Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates stepped down and passed the role on to Steve Ballmer. How many references to my home state are we going to get very subtly in this video, but one of the things that Bill Gates would focus on immediately after his retirement from being the CEO, note that he was still employed to some degree at Microsoft, and technically still is, but his role is much smaller than it used to be. But one of his objectives was to focus on promoting Windows 2000. Surprisingly, the Microsoft versus United States antitrust stuff was not something that affected Windows 2000 a lot, which is interesting because it was a big deal. Especially because of the fact that, to put some context, Microsoft by this point had eradicated Netscape from literally any public attention. It's sad, but Windows 2000 was released in 2000 after three years of development and a billion dollars invested in developing Windows 2000. It was replaced not even two years later with Windows XP, but it still remained fairly significant as its OS ton. And Windows 2000 actually had a fairly decent enough chunk of the market share, consisting of people who didn't really want to use XP, among other things. But it died a slow, painful death. Mainstream support for it ended in 2005, but despite this, some computers still had Windows 2000 drivers, such as this Dell Dimension 3000 and this Toshiba Takra A8EZ8313. Windows 2000 would, over the next five years, start to lose developer support, and in 2010, extended support ended for Windows 2000, making it effectively obsolete. I should note here that Windows 2000 is a common target for hackers, apparently, primarily due to its age and amount of vulnerabilities, and so, using Windows 2000 on the internet for extended periods of time is not really a good idea. Even me, somebody that is smart and is not going to click on suspicious links or store bank info or passwords on my computer, at least my older computers, I have fallen victim to a Windows 2000 PC being hit with malware, presumably. However, that was in earlier 2023. If you're trying to just do something like get up updates or briefly use the internet, you should probably be fine, just as long as you don't keep Windows 2000 online for prolonged periods of time. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's look at the computer that we're going to be using. This time, it's another Dell Dimension, specifically the aforementioned.
aforementioned Dell Dimension 3000, which while Dell doesn't have drivers proper for this thing, its drivers are shared with the a Dell Optiplex GX series model. The drivers that I mainly need are compatible with Windows 2000. This computer has an Intel Pentium 4 at I think 2.4 or 2.8 gigahertz, 512 megabytes of RAM, and a 40 gigabyte hard drive. It also has integrated graphics, but Windows 2000's gaming scene is a bit of an interesting case because late 90s games don't always work with Windows NT, but one of the few games I do know works is Diablo 2, a game that while I have a physical copy of, it's a game that unfortunately we can't take a look at proper. We'll get into that when we play games. So I suppose we should go start this up now. Oh, and also one brief note, I'm using a dual camera system here, so because I'm new to using a camera for recording video, I kind of messed up the exposure settings, so this is going to look really bright, and I apologize. Alright, apologies if the commentary in the recording sounds meh. It's a actual camera. But I should mention the... I'm not the most... I think 98 to start up sounds a bit better. Now that we've got this all started up, let's go look at some of the programs that were bundled with Windows 2000. As per usual, we're going to start with Paint. Don't know what to draw this time. It's a drawing program, I don't need to say too much, and this time we're going to draw one of the most interesting United States naval ships that you'll ever have seen. The USS Monitor. Primarily because my dad keeps bringing it up to me. And Monitor Lizards. Trying to draw one of the most bizarre ships that... Oh yes, nothing like drawing one of the most bizarre U.S. naval ships that was... actually... a thing. I'm sorry, you know what I haven't done with this? Text. I'm bringing this up because my dad keeps bringing up that ship. Next up on the block, there's calculator. Three times six is 18. Five plus two is seven. 89 divided by four is 22 plus 25. And, I know, two minus two is zero. Oh yeah, we also have this. What's the... Well, that's that. The sign of 897. Also, there's WordPad. Windows 2000 comes with Windows Media Player, a media playing application, Break the camera's focus. I don't know. I did.
Also, this keeps skipping. What the heck? We also have Sinternet Explorer. Six, because I updated. Yeah, this website from a bit back. It's Internet Explorer. And we also have Solitaire. Can't go wrong with Solitaire. Don't know why I said that. That's probably gonna get edited out. Next, let's look at some of the programs that were popular during Windows 2000's time. Microsoft Word, where we can write things that, where we can try to write things to... <laughs> oh, no! I just wanted to end the letter without help! <laughs> and, uh, besides, I'm writing to, besides, I'm trying to... Also, my arm hurts. We also have Microsoft Excel 2000, where we can make a spreadsheet about fruit values. Actually, we're probably gonna have like a blueberry and grape monopoly. <laughs> At least it's gonna look like it in Excel. Because you know what? Because I know what? <coughs> berry is the best berry. And be clearly biased towards blueberries. Now we need more apples. There's also Adobe Photoshop 6, which came out in 2001 before Windows XP came out. An image editing application, so I think you can understand this to some extent. We also have AutoCAD 2000 for designing things like chairs. And Netscape Navigator 6, which by this point was dwindling quite a bit in market share, and most people weren't using it by this point. But at least we still got the book of Mozilla here. Here's another one of these. And the beast shall be made legion. Its numbers uh, shall be increased a thousand, thousandfold. The din of a million keyboards like unto a great storm shall cover the earth and the followers of the men shall tremble. From the Book of Mozilla 331 Red Letter Edition. Oh, and there's also this. Last but not least, briefly let's look at Winamp 2.75. Which, fun fact, I got this uh, copy of Winamp from installing Netscape, which uh, apparently at this time frame had the option to install Winamp and Real Player, which, given these were kind of popular programs, it kind of wonders me why more people didn't use Netscape at this point in time. I mean, sure, Internet Explorer came pre installed, but you could get three programs in one. What a deal! I also want to briefly mention that there are some programs that still support Windows 2000, such as 7-Zip, Clamwin Antivirus, and Image Burn. Next up, let's look at some games. Now, as I briefly mentioned earlier, Windows 2000 did not have the best compatibility with games from the 90s, so the amount of games that are going to be shown here is a bit limited. First off, Bejeweled Deluxe, a popular game from the time that has left a big legacy on gaming in general.
Next up, Microsoft Windblows 98, a parody game jabbing at Microsoft and the aforementioned things that led to Netscape's decline. So fast! What the hell? As well as Age of Empires. And before we move on, I want to give a honorable mention to Diablo 2. I wanted to play this game in this video, but I couldn't get Diablo 2 working. It keeps showing this error at me, even though I've got the proper media for this game and whatnot. So, unfortunately, we can't look at it. Oh well. At least I can briefly show you the remastered version, which isn't all too different, honestly. It's just a remastered version of the game. Although, we should really move on because this video is not about the Xbox Series S or X. So, moving on, we've got Half-Life. I should mention that I'm using the tutorial here because I can do it at a faster pace, so I think you could get the point that I'm trying to make. And last but not least, Lego Island. I should note here that with Lego Island, I have to use the MMX stuff because when I tried using Direct3D, it didn't really work properly. Thankfully, this game has different ways that you can draw the graphics, and as such, that means we can use MMX and it'll just appear just fine. I am not the most familiar with this game and I haven't tried it a lot and I've never played before, so let's give it a shot. <laughs> And it's generally going to be about it for this. Overall, when is you... Anyway, overall, Windows 2000 is generally not that bad. It's like, collect connecting it to the internet is not gonna immediately cause problems, and it held its own to some extent in a time where the US market was oftentimes dominated by Windows XP, and it played a big role in Windows XP's development. So it shouldn't be looked past immediately between Windows 98, 95, and XP because it's fairly significant. And in fact, it introduced consumers to Windows NT because of the poor reputation of Windows Millennium Edition. But overall, I think it's still fairly nice. 